Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. Hey, what's up guys, CP Modi here, back with another video. And today we're gonna to be having a chat about storage. So maybe you're not the world's best person at picking the storage, or maybe you just wanna make sure that whatever you're choosing for your storage options is the right, well, option. Now for me, I absolutely love storage, whether they're SSDs, hard drives, internal, external, cloud storage, anything like that, I absolutely love it. Currently running about 115 terabytes local here across a couple systems, as well as an extra 50 terabytes with the storage in the cloud, not to mention my Backblaze backups, which is an extra like 120 terabytes. So all in all, I do absolutely love my storage. So today we'll be touching on sort of the main points about each types of storage technologies, what some of the pluses and minuses of, and even some suggestions and ideas on what to actually use these tech for. So let's kick things off with one of the latest being M.2 NVMe drives. So these M.2 NVMe drives are the hottest and latest and greatest creations out of the SSD space that offer insane speeds. Now these guys are actually rather similar to their M.2 and M SATA brothers and sisters, however they're a little bit different as well. Now the main differences come in the speed department. Because these guys run the NVMe protocol, they are so much faster. We're talking 3 gigabytes per second fast. That is absolutely crazy. Yes, 3 gigabytes per second. You can theoretically transfer this entire render file, so this entire video, in one second, which is really, really crazy. And this is thanks to Samsung trying to push the limit to the maximum with their latest drives, and even if they're not the super fast three gigabytes per second, they're still much faster than other drives out there. So NVMe drives really, really fast. Now, other than the insane speeds, they also too do offer decent small form factors. So if you are looking at a small form factor build, an M.2 or really an NVMe drive as well will offer great compatibility for smaller base systems, and also do in terms of their actual size and capacity wise they're also do not too bad with a one terabyte NVMe drive actually becoming more and more affordable as each day does go past don't get me wrong though they're still really really expensive compared to a general SSD or even one of these guys a hard drive so they're still relatively expensive but they are getting more and more cost effective these guys are great for being a single boot drive for a system or even something like a fast access scratch drive for pro applications such as video editing programs or even in some cases gaming for super fast load times. Though keep in mind as we found out in this video right here, just because you have a super fast drive won't necessarily mean that you're getting the maximum performance. The law of diminishing returns does pop up here. But all in all, these drives are really great for a boot drive or some sort of super fast access drive. Though with that being said, it does come at the cost of, well, money. They are a lot more expensive and usually don't have the same capacities as bigger mechanical or even a bigger SSD will offer. Now keeping it in that M.2 family, we have M.2 SATA and also to subsequently we also do have RM SATA. Now I put these two together because they're essentially the same type of technology. Yes, the interface that connects them up to the computers is totally different between M.2 and M SATA. However, they're both based on the SATA interface and they're also to both based on SSD flash media. So they're kind of the same here. Now just like their relatives, the NVMe drives, they're basically the same kind of form factor, same looking. However, they don't run the NVMe protocol meaning they're not going to be as fast. Now, because of this, they also do don't cost as much and actually cost closer to their 2.5-inch uh, SSD brothers rather than the M.2 NVMe drives. Now, the benefit of picking one of these guys up, uh, other than being a little bit cheaper and you can afford more storage, is also to the same small form factor performance. If you've got yourself a mini ITX system and can't exactly afford yourself a super fast NVMe drive, these are also to another great option. But let's face it, and SATA drive is still pretty fast for today's market and and mostly all of my systems in here, apart from one, uh, do not run NVMe drives. So for the most part, you should be pretty well served from a standard SATA drive. Now, because again, they are running on SATA, they're also too better in the compatibility department because now you don't have to worry about uh, your motherboard needing to be compatible with NVMe drives. They just work out of the box because they are SATA. So all in all, these guys do deliver better compatibility, decent enough performance, but also to better prices for the size and capacity. They're 
little bit of an odd one because they're not really standing out anywhere, but they do get the job done and they're not too bad there when compared to a two and a half inch SSD. Now, keeping it with that two and a half inch SSD, we get, well, the two and a half inch SSD. Now, these guys are slightly older in terms of the whole SSD world. Sure, if you look at the entire line of storage, they're not exactly that old, but definitely two and a half inch SSDs are getting a little bit older in their design. And apart from that one Intel one that has like a U.2 connector for NVMe, just about all two and a half inch SSDs are also too based on this SATA interface. So you're getting the same speed and performance that we'd be seeing on that SATA based M.2 drive. The benefit of these guys in particular is they are super compatible with just about anything on the market. Whether you're looking at two and a half inch uh, drives or three and a half inch drives, SSDs uh, in the two and a half inch form factor will be able to fit into them. Thanks to the fact that also to the SATA interface that is what they use to connect up has been around since about the early 2000s. These guys will work with just about any laptop or desktop on the market today. Heck, they'll even work in consoles. That is how flexible they are. Paired them up with usually larger storage options up to about four and I've even seen some eight terabytes coming down the line. There's some really great options when it comes to getting large storage in an SSD drive. The downside, however, of these guys is they don't have the same performance as an NVMe drive, but then the upshot is they're super compatible with just about anything out there and not to mention they're also too well a lot better in the price department so all in all the two and a half inch SSD actually still has a fair bit of relativity when it comes to building with systems here today now on that two and a half inch front we also do then flip over to the hard drive side now two and a half inch hard drives are very similar to their SSD brothers same form factor same size however they don't run the same type of technology obviously being a hard drive inside and they are some of the smallest hard drives you can buy on the market today other than that weird little CF hard drive it's like a little little baby hard drive inside of a CF card. Remember them? These guys right here. But either way, they're a little bit bigger than an SD card, and I should definitely get one in to do a video because they're really, really cool. But all in all though, two and a half inch SSDs today are some of the smallest drives you can get on the market today and really are only recommended to be used in a laptop drive. Now sure, their performance can be very similar to their bigger brothers in terms of the three and a half inch hard drives, but when it comes to day to day performance, they are going to lose out in terms of longevity because, well, they're a hard drive and unfortunately not an SSD. In terms of sizing though, they are looking around that two terabyte marker. However, with new models coming out, we are looking at pushing them up to four terabytes. So they're actually not too bad for mass storage. However, they're only really recommended to be used in a laptop and sure they can be used in the desktop, but and they really do shine in a low power laptop situations. Again, that's not stopping you from putting them in a desktop, but they really do live in terms of a laptop. Then we get to these guys that I've been tapping on all video, and that is the three and a half inch hard drives. These guys are big, they're a little bit heavy, and they're definitely made for mass storage. Now, speaking of these larger drives, they're coming in at obviously the three and a half inch form factor, but they do make up for their big size and weight in terms of their capacity up to 10 terabytes at the time of recording with 12 terabyte options. Really really close if not out already and even bigger options coming down the line in the future. In terms of the storage market, these guys are ancient and they've been around for just about forever, meaning prices aren't actually that bad big capacities, big prices, but where they do lose out is in terms of the speed department. Unfortunately, they're not as great as your SSDs in terms of the speed department. And with the price of a four terabyte drive actually getting really, really low, in some cases I've seen them less than $100, these guys are really great if you're looking at doing mass storage. Whether you just wanna put one big one in your computer or you're looking at setting up a RAID array, NAS or server or something like that, three and a half inch drives are very hard to go wrong with here in 2018. And the best combination is actually to pair these guys up with an SSD that we talked about before. Because they offer such great storage, they're a little bit crappy in terms of speed. So to get yourself a super fast NVMe drive and put that as your boot drive and use these guys in mass storage is something that is a really good idea. Don't get me wrong, you can still get away with running these guys as a boot drive, but they're really not that great for it here in 2018. Then moving on, we get to a NAS. Now a NAS isn't like one of these guys where you can just pick up a NAS like this and store stuff on it. NASs do require on other components, but these guys run on really whatever drives you do put in it. Whether you want to put SSDs in there or you want to put bigger hard drives in there, whatever you want can go into a NAS. And if you get all SSD, then the NAS is going to be super fast. And if you go for, well, all mechanical drives, the capacities can be really large. Though that being said, NAS drives can also to support RAID mode on top of having different drives options. So not only do you get the best of choosing what drive you 
want to go in there, but also do you get the well, best world of redundancy. So if a whole drive dies, you can chuck it out, put a new one back in and no data is lost. That is something that's really great about NAS and RAID support is well, they do support these technologies. Don't get me wrong though, you can buy two hard drives, put them in the system and run them in RAID and be fine, but NASs are definitely designed for a bit more redundancy than your day-to-day -day system. The downside of a NAS is you can't boot a computer off it, typically speaking. Sure, there's going to be someone out there saying that I boot my system off a NAS, good for you, but for the most part, you can't exactly do that. And also too, they can be rather costly for what you're going to be using it for. So NAS may not be for everyone. However, on the plus side, NASs do offer a absolute ton of storage, can actually be relatively cost effective, even though we mentioned they can be expensive. If you get relatively cheap drives, you can actually build yourself a pretty cheap NAS and overall are pretty flexible as a lot of the time you can start with say two drives in your NAS and just keep adding them until the NAS has no more physical room and you just keep putting more and more storage storage in. So they're really flexible and do whatever you want them to do. Now on top of this, we also to get ourselves a DAS. Now a DAS is very similar in terms of well, storage technology. However, the DAS goes ahead and runs directly attached, whereas the NAS, network attached storage, was attached to the network. So multiple computers can use it. Whereas a DAS is very similar to a NAS. For example, our Drobo video that we checked out, that guy was a DAS. So multiple drives, just like the NAS. However, the difference being, well, you can only plug it into one computer. Now, this can be a benefit, thanks to the fact that you don't have to share the resources with anyone. There's better security in that kind of front. However, the downside is you can't collaborate with anyone. But all the same positives do come over from a NAS. Redundancy, so if a drive dies, you can whack a new one brand in. We can go ahead and do things like a really fast SSD-based DAS and get super blazing performance, or you could set it up with mechanical hard drives and get epic uh, storage capacity, all in all, it is really, really flexible as well. So that is where a DAS does shine. If you've got a single user that you want to attach a ton of storage to, DAS is the way to go. Not exactly as common as the NAS, but at the same time, still a pretty good option. So then we get to servers and SAN. Now servers and SAN are put into the sort of the same category, mainly because, well, if you're going to be looking at them, chances are you kind of have not know what's going on now. SAN or storage array network and server are basically big computers that have a ton of storage in there that is super flexible, super customizable, and you can really do whatever you want from having a ton of redundancy to a ton of super fast speed, really whatever you can imagine, the server probably can do. Now, a benefit of running a server instead of just a standard hard drive or even a NAS or a DAS is the fact that I did mention that they are completely um, customizable, but also too, they can be serving dual purposes. For example, my file server that I have out there goes ahead and runs a file server, but also too does other tasks in the background. It runs, for example, a Squid web cache and also too goes ahead and runs, well, things like my Plex media storage. So you can actually assign a server more than one task, meaning they can do a whole lot more than just store your files, which is actually not too bad. Now, as I did mention, these guys are super flexible. Again, whoever is setting up the NAS or uh, rather the server or the SAN, basically whatever they can think of is what your SAN or server is going to be doing. So all in all, there's definitely a lot of things you can do with a server and is very, very flexible. However, the main downside to a server or SAN is they are very, very expensive, not only to set up, but also to maintain. Because generally speaking, you want to be buying specialty hard drives to run in the server. They're more expensive. They generally use more power than just a single drive or even a NAS or DAS. So in terms of maintenance and also to the initial build cost, they are going to be much more expensive. However, if you are a business or doing something mission critical, servers are definitely really, really important. But for the most part, us here at home don't really need a server. Or I guess if you're like me, then yeah, I guess you do need a server. But all in all, for the most part, servers and that kind of technology, more of your business side. So there we go, those were some of the storage technologies that are on the market and a quick little touch on what each of them are and really whether they're really going to be compatible for you. So I guess let me know down in that comment section, what storage do you run? Do you just run your internal hard drives? Do you have some external ones? Do you run a NAS or even a DAS? Do let me know down below. If you have any further questions about hard drives, which ones should you get and all that kind of stuff, you can also do hit me up down below. Love to have a chat with you guys. Otherwise, I'll leave everything that I did talk about from hard drives, NASs, DASs, servers, all that kind of stuff down in that description box. You can go and have a look at them there. Thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.